guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. In this video, I just wanna show you some of my camera gear that I use to make my YouTube videos. I have other gear that I use for other video production stuff, but uh, this is pretty much what I use just for YouTube. On that note, I'm helping a friend start a new channel, uh, Linda with Target Fitness, and we've got one video up, and actually we kinda of did a cool intro for it. I'm gonna put that in right here. So that's a little intro, we're gonna change that intro up all the time. But if you're interested in some really great fitness tips, check her channel out. We're gonna be uploading a video once a week. Really simple, very concise, uh, useful exercises, stretches, tips. We're trying to keep all our videos under like two minutes, maybe some might go up to four depending on the exercise we're doing, but she runs a fantastic gym in Strathmore here. Give her a little bit of YouTube love. Okay, back to the gear. Start off with the camera that I'm shooting on right now. Uh, it is the Canon G7X Mark II. That's the camera that I use for almost all of my video work that's not in the shop. I love that camera. Uh, a couple of reasons. Um, the audio is pretty good. Without any external audio, you can turn it on and start recording, and it's really quite acceptable audio. If you're getting into DSLR videos, you've gotta look at external mics or lav mics, different options like that, plus all the lenses. So that's the one I really enjoy for almost all of my uh, stuff. One feature I love about it is it's got the time-lapse capability in that it will actually compress it and take all those still images and put them into one solid movie file. Uh, say if you're using a GoPro or a DSLR with a timer on it, um, you've got to stitch all those individual images into your own movie and that's a lot of work. So the G7X Mark II with that built-in time-lapse feature, saving it as a movie file, it's really handy. Next camera I use a lot of is my Canon 70D. This is a great camera. Obviously the 80D is the newer version of this now and I like it. Uh, the active track, the focus where you touch the screen and it'll select the focusing works really well. That was always the biggest drawback with um, DSLRs is, you know, I had a 5D Mark II it was my first digital camera I bought and great video but no autofocus and so that was always a tough spot. You know, you shoot a lot of great clips and it's like, oh man, just miss focus by a little bit. So. That typically doesn't happen too much with this. Having said that, it's not perfect. I use this for a lot of photographic work too, still imagery. Lenses for this, I use this one quite a bit right now. This is the 50 millimeter f1.2. This is a pretty serious piece of glass. This lens is over $2,000. And I use this one for a lot of uh, photography. And then one lens that I really like for this camera is the 24 millimeter pancake lens. I'm kind of a fan of fixed focal length lenses. Uh, they're less expensive generally, uh, unless you're getting into like the L series glass, but you can even buy like a 50 millimeter f1.8. Um, you can get those for like under $200. I think I paid like 97 bucks for one. And so it's kind of nice just to do these uh, little fixed focal length lenses. Um, the one thing, these are kind of noisy when you're recording on a DSLR, you hear the focusing if it's a moving shot. Even if you're shooting with this one at a really low aperture, it's always changing where the focal point is. And so uh, you get a lot of that lens noise and that's when sometimes an external microphone is handy or like a lav mic is ideal. Um, for external mics for this one, I'll use this. This is the Rode video mic. It works pretty good. It's got a dead cat on there. It's got this little shock absorber and really good for windy conditions. Even with this though, I can still hear the focusing noise on my 70D, so that's kind of a little bit of a bummer. One other piece of audio gear I use for this camera is this Sennheiser lav mic. Uh, this is really the ultimate for uh, getting rid of your camera noise because the mic is not anywhere near the camera. Uh, so you've got this and here, it plugs into your camera, the audio jack. And this obviously has your lav mic. A little bit big, a little bit clunky to wear sometimes, but great audio. I've also got windscreens for these, so that helps if you're shooting outside. And these have a huge range, so it's not that I've ever done it, but you could potentially walk 100 feet away from the camera and still have perfect audio as if you're standing right in front of the lens. So kind of a neat little option. There are cheaper versions than this. This is a fairly decent quality one, but um, I bought these used off a friend, so I got a pretty good deal on them. And that's pretty much what I use my 70D for. 
other cameras I have, uh, the main one that I shoot in the shop with here is this Canon. It's a Vixia HF R40. Uh, I call this one a crappy cam. I shouldn't really say that though because it's a pretty good little camera. It shoots HD. You know, bang for your buck if you just want to get into making YouTube channels. I don't think you can really go wrong with these. The audio is okay. One nice thing I like, they do have audio input so you can use uh, an external mic. Uh, some people use a shotgun mic on them or you can use a lav mic or something like that. And they shoot HD, um, easy to use, turn them on and boom, you're good to go. Fairly decent uh, zoom, optical zoom in some of them. Some of them are kind of crazy. Um, this one says it has a, a 32 times optical zoom. So that's pretty nice. So once you get into the digital zoom, you get all blurry and stuff. So if you can get a decent optical zoom, it makes it very versatile. I wish this was a little bit wider uh, for close-up shots, but it works. Uh, so this is the one that I do a lot of my knife making videos with and anytime I'm in the mist shop I don't like to have even my G7X or my 70D when there's dust around because that stuff gets into places and it can spoil your camera and frustrate you for years. Another camera that I use in the shop I'm going to start using more of is just the little GoPro session. Uh, these are inexpensive. I like GoPros. I've had a few of them. I think they're fun. I'm always a little disappointed on the image quality. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter which settings I use. I never get those awesome pictures that they have in the display booth at Walmart or whatever sports store you're, you're buying it from. <sighs> they work pretty good. Uh, guys like uh, Jimmy DeResta, he has like videos that he's done the whole thing on some type of an action cam. I don't know if it's a GoPro or not, but this is a cool little one. I like its simplicity. You press start and you press the button, it starts recording. You press the button, it stops recording. Um, and you know, you can get some kind of interesting shots with it. It's kind of fun. And uh, I'm gonna actually start recording with this a little bit more. Uh, maybe set it up here. Maybe do some shots of the workbench and see what's going on. Also, it's amazing when you're using this for building stuff in a small area, how much you can get. I mean, that's why people like them. They're such a wide angle lens and you can actually see enough of what's going on and in a small area that I think these are pretty handy for videos when you're making things. Obviously, I've got a lot of different accessories and clamps and attachments and doohickeys for it. Uh, play a different part in it all. I think that's it. Oh, one more camera. The camera that flies. I have a Phantom 4. You probably know that. These things are really cool. Uh, they take awesome video footage, awesome photos. I choose raw images, which is nice when you're going to edit them in post-production. But I am absolutely shocked at how well these things are made. I had a drone before and it was a piece of junk. It's an old parrot and you just crashed it all the time. I would buy motors in 10 packs because I was always replacing them. I've crashed this twice. Once I was flying backwards in the gym and I didn't stop in time and I smashed into the wall. And then another time, low level battery and I kept saying ignore, ignore, ignore and I was way up high and it lost power and it came down. Last second I just gave it a burst and it kind of saved it. I'd say it probably fell from 30 feet and it didn't break. That kind of shocked me. It hit the ground, bounced upside down. Some of the propellers came off but it's completely intact and the gimbal on this is really amazing so you get really nice steady images. Um, I like this thing. I'm working on a video of just a whole bunch of compilation images of some cool shots I've done with this. I really look at this more as a photo tool than a flying toy. Some of the images you can get just from having a different vantage point, it's, it's just amazing. And so really good for B-roll footage. I've used this for a few other uh, video projects. I've worked with other companies and stuff and it's kind of fun. So the flying camera. That's pretty much it for the different cameras that I use for shooting my videos. Go over a few accessories really quick that I really enjoy. Oh, also I use my iPhone. I have the iPhone 6 and great camera. One thing with that is the audio is not so awesome, but I'll use a Rode Video Mic Me with it. And uh, it's basically just a little tiny shotgun mic, a directional microphone, uh, plugs into the audio jack on your phone. This works with iPhone, Android. Uh, one thing you need to check is your lens location. If it's located too close to the audio port, you might have issues, especially when you put this dead cat on there. Um, I did a review on this. You know, if you just want to be able to uh, possibly catch something and you're on the go and you don't want to lug camera gear around, pretty cool little option. You carry this and your phone, which you'd have on you anyways, and you're set to take some video footage. So cool little thing for that. The other thing I use with my iPhone is the shoulder pod. 
This is a fairly pricey one. Uh, it's basically a clamp that clamps your smartphone in here, but really good quality. I think these guys probably make one of the better ones. I think this was like $80, so it's not cheap by any stretch. Uh, right now I just have it on this really inexpensive knockoff um, Gorilla Pod type thing. Princess Auto, this thing was like $2. And I use this with my iPhone for a lot of time-lapse footage. Uh, I can just set it out there, plug it in. I'm gonna show you one thing I use as well, one more thing. When I'm shooting time-lapse, it's very easy. It just kills your batteries. Your batteries will run down really quick. And I bought one of these Milwaukee uh, USB adapter things. And I have Milwaukee tools, so I can plug this on my batteries, my M18 batteries, and like this. And now I've got USB power. This will do about three full charges on my iPhone. So if I'm shooting a long time-lapse, sometimes I'll shoot like a four-hour time-lapse. It's kind of nice because it'll pretty much drain this battery, uh, but my phone is fully topped up and I don't ever uh, worry about my phone dying. I use this and I actually consider this part of my video gear. I'll take this with me when I know I'm going to shoot a time lapse of something with my iPhone. Okay, I'm going to set up my, I'll set up my 70D, uh, I'm going to set up my iPhone. Nah, I don't like to do it. I'm just going to show you my G7X Mark II. I like filming with the G7X Mark II so much and the audio is the same and it's so simple, it's all on one card and I'm just going to show you the camera, okay? Uh, in my broken mirror. So there you have it. Nilo camera, uh, display tilts up and down. I have it on a Gorillapod and this one's with a Manfrotto, whoops you can't see that, uh, Manfrotto 492 uh, ball head. Uh, kind of a cool little option, works well. Um, like I said, that camera is rock solid. I would say if you want to make nice looking YouTube videos with good quality image and a decent sound, that's about the simplest way to get into it is with something like a Canon G7X Mark II. This is obviously less expensive, but the image quality is not quite there. A few other accessories I always have with me uh, is a little rocket puffer uh, blowing out your lenses with, and then some type of a cleaning kit. Uh, this is a Zeiss. Uh, it's got cleaners, wipes, all that stuff. Worst thing is if you get out of the lean, say you're shooting, you get a little drop of rain on your lens and now that bothers you or you can see it. Nice to have this stuff always ready so you can just wipe it off quick. For other accessory type things, uh, tripod. I've switched up my main tripod. This is a Manfrotto 190 Go. I like this one. I like these uh, little half twist locks. Uh, really solid little tripod. I've got just a Manfrotto. I don't know what model it is. Uh, it's a Pro Ball 30 our 308RC uh, head and it uses these Monfrotto plates. This is what I've always used back when I did like photography full time and I just, I had all these plates kicking around so I haven't changed it. Also another tripod is this one, the Manfrotto 190 Pro B. So I guess they're both 190s, both similar size but this has the old school clasps that you have to lock. They're fine, it works good. I actually want to build a jib crane for this one for some other shots that I'm doing so. I also have a little Cinevate slider. Um, I don't know what model this is. It's not big. 26 inch slider. This thing's really nice and smooth. You can build these, but I got this on Kijiji, used for a really hot deal. Probably seen a few slider dolly shots in this channel before. I use it for that sometimes. I actually need to get a video head for this because I don't have one. I just kind of take one of these ones off, but uh, got the plate on the bottom there too so I can mount this on my tripod and it's kind of fun just the extra little b-roll that tiny little clip uh, don't buy one of these and think you're going to use it all the time but if you kind of want to just add like a little extra three seconds of special footage to a video these things are kind of cool other than buying a slider you could build one yourself too uh, this is just pvc i haven't even glued any of it and then uh, these like inline wheels i got these at lee valley and i think they're four bucks a piece which is actually kind of expensive i guess maybe not that bad um and then really a uh, quarter inch screw and a bolt there and you put your camera on you can get some dolly shots with that you can tilt it in or out uh, you can also make it do whoops uh, radius so actually turn around an object or something like that cool little thing to build uh, actually, i actually haven't ever used this one on this channel before i've never actually used it before i built it i did a bunch of test footage with it and i really liked it, it was cool but then i saw my slider for smoking hot deal and bought that instead but certainly a cool little option just to give you that extra little pizzazz in your videos and you have to carry your gear somehow the main camera bag i use is the urban disguise uh, 60 made by think tank 
Now I had the original version of this bag when they came out with it and I liked it a lot better. I sold it years ago and I ended up buying this new version. I'm not so crazy about it. Uh, first a little strap, I think it's terrible. Like this is set up for me and I'm not a short guy, I'm six foot two. This is plenty long enough for me. So why is there this much extra strap? I guarantee this would suit somebody that's 11 feet tall and they'd be able to have this right at their waist. So really ridiculous and this little thing that they give you to hold it on, it works terrible. It always comes out. Don't like the straps on this thing. A few things they did do nice. Um, say if you're a wedding photographer, I've actually got some weddings I'm photographing this year too. But they got these silent things so you can cover everything up and so that during the ceremony or you're changing out your gear, if you've ever shot a wedding, you know that it is intense. Usually there's always at least two body, two cameras going uh, on your person and then you're switching lenses out and it's, it's exhausting. But nice thing is you can put these little silencers on and then just use the buckles or not. But when I need to open this up and get at my stuff, it's not making a bunch of noise. It does have the padded laptop sleeve in there, which is kind of nice. Fits a 17 inch laptop. And this one's the Urban Disguise 60 Classic. Pretty decent bag. I like the original one better though. For all of my GoPro gear, I just use this Maxpedition. I don't know what it is. I don't even know what the model is. I apologize, I can't tell you. It's like a sling bag, uh, one strap type of deal. I had this for some type of a emergency kit at one point in time. I've got some other ones of these that are, I have a tool kit in my truck, it's like an emergency tool kit. But I saw this one and I thought this is perfect because I can stuff all my different GoPro attachments in there, um, all my memory cards, yada yada, and keep it all ready. And that way I know this is just for GoPro stuff. Speaking of memory cards, a memory card wallet is a good idea. This one again is by Think Tank. I got this for free when I bought my bag. It's just nice to be able to keep your cards organized. If you're getting into photography, like if you do wedding photography or any type of photography or video work, these things are invaluable because you keep all your stuff in one spot. Very, very important when you start getting into doing a lot of videos is keeping your gear organized because it's amazing how much you use it. You use all this different stuff and if it's not exactly where you need to be, it can be so frustrating fiddling through your bag trying to find something when you're just, you got the shot that you want to do but you can't do it because you can't find your stuff. That's kind of an important thing. Keep your stuff organized. And another little tip that goes along with keeping your stuff organized is knowing which batteries are always charged. If you're going to be doing a lot of shooting, you're going to need a few sets of batteries. For every camera I own, I have at least three sets of batteries except for the GoPro because that doesn't use batteries. It's plug in to charge only. Biggest drawback of that camera, I think. Um, but what I actually do is I label my batteries. One, two, three. That way, I always use them in a sequential order. So I'm shooting with number one, number one's dead. I can put in the charger and I'll always grab number two. Reason for that is I get even wear on all my batteries. I don't know if it really makes a difference, but in theory it should. So even on my DSLR batteries, they're all labeled one, two, three. So I'll keep them in my bag that are charged with their caps on, these little covers that they come with. That way I know that's a good battery. And then anything that's not charged that needs to be charged, I leave the cover off. That way when I'm grabbing a new battery uh, from my bag, I know exactly which one's charged and which ones need to be charged when I get home. Keep them organized, shoot sequentially, wear them out evenly. Also keep some spare batteries for things like my lav mic. And there's one other bag that I use. It's more of an EDC bag, but I end up carrying a lot of camera gear in it because it's awesome. I'm gonna do a video review on this bag, I think. The GORUCK GR1. These guys are a great company. An American made bag, top quality materials. Um, really cool company actually. They do a lot of these rucking events. And it's a very simple backpack. It's not overly uh, tactical, but in a way it is. See, it's got some molly webbing on the front. Also has molly webbing on the inside, but they've made it very, very simple. Uh, they've got these large pockets on the inside. There's a big mesh one here. This is where I put all my cords. Uh, this is where I put my wallet and keys and stuff like that. And then they've got this outside pocket for quick access to stuff. And um, you can put a morale patch here if you want to. Very tough. And then they've got a laptop compartment right here. And it's got this extra padding, which is great. So I can put my laptop in there and they've got a hydration pouch spot here. I usually put my camera in there so it's separate from all my other gear. And I absolutely love this bag. It's not flashy, it doesn't stand out, and it's just built like a tank. And also, if you wreck these, they will just fix them. You send them to them and they've got the stitches program, I believe, and they'll repair them and send them back to you. So that's kind of a cool thing. I really like that mentality, fixing something rather than just throwing it out and buying a new one. 
And then lastly, uh, for the workflow side of things, all the work that happens after you shoot the video, um, I use Final Cut Pro, which obviously means I work on a Mac. I've tried doing videos on PCs before, even really well specced PCs, and I don't want to open up a can of worms here, but if you're editing video, you'd be hard pressed to do it on anything better uh, than a Mac. Uh, yeah, don't I don't want to get into it, but um, I mean, if you've tried both, I don't think there's really an argument there. PCs are great for things too. Macs are better for video and photo editing. Oh boy. Oh boy. Shouldn't have said that. Anyways, I use Final Cut Pro. Uh, I use everything on a Lacey, uh, a one terabyte hard drive. That way nothing is actually stored on my computer and it's fast enough that it works and it doesn't clog up my computer. I had a 17 inch MacBook Pro and I'm down to a 13 inch. I just bought a couple months ago, but man, that thing is solid. And that's pretty much it. I think that's everything that I use for making my YouTube videos. Uh, hopefully this helps you out. If you're say looking into getting into YouTube videos or starting a channel, um, Really great option to something like this. Uh, GoPro, keep in mind, the audio sucks on a GoPro, and it's not going to be the uh, do-all camera that you would hope it would be. Um, my recommendation would be something along the lines of G7X Mark II. $800, somewhere around there, but it's a one camera, you get a couple extra batteries, make sure you've got sufficient memory in your cards, and you're set to shoot videos. If nothing else, uh, grab your phone. You know, even with the poor audio, if your content's good, people will watch it. Uh, you can fix that with a little microphone like this, 60 bucks, you already have the phone, you're making YouTube videos. Hope you find this information useful. If you have any questions about the stuff I use or want a little more information on it, just let me know. I'll do my best to answer it for you. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.